Okay, so should you feel ashamed for being unproductive? Well, I think this is a subject I have a lot to say about because I've been racking it around my brain for years, years and years and years. So I have this thing that I think a fair number of other creative professionals have, which is where as soon as you start to take a break, you have this nagging anxiety in the back of your head that says, hey, why are you taking a break? You should be doing something instead. No progress is being made while you're enjoying playing this video game. What are you doing? And I'll tell you what, it's very freaking annoying. <laughs> The thing is, I think this sensation is useful to a certain degree. I think it's useful because having that anxiety of knowing that you should be doing something productive does help you keep on your toes. It keeps you always kind of questioning how long it's been since you last did something, whether you're actually making progress and stuff like that. I think having that kind of smoldering just under the surface is quite handy because it keeps you in tune with the fact that yes, you can be doing stuff that will ultimately help you in your life in some way, help you develop skills, help you get closer to your goals, your dreams, etc. On the other hand, I think if you let it affect you too much, it can be quite detrimental towards your mental health. And I think I've had that happen to me in the past to a certain degree. You know, if you're too hard on yourself, if you're pushing yourself too far, you end up missing out on all the things that give you a really important amount of emotional stimulation, stuff like video games, music, films, uh, casually just talking to people that you like, you know, enjoying the company of all these different aspects that I think are very important for humanity, the, the cultural side of life, if you want to call it that. If you're strictly focused in on being productive, you block out all distractions and you remove those cultural aspects and what you end up becoming is just a husk of unmotivated boredom just trotting along trying to make things go faster and trying to always be on top of this productivity game which is always quite detrimental because there's like no real limit I think to how much work you can put into something or how far you can push yourself I guess the limit would be when you just collapse or whether you reach just a breaking point where you don't want to get out of bed in the morning. Obviously, that's something that should be avoided. So I think a balance is absolutely necessary. You do need to give yourself time to take breaks. And I don't think just taking breaks in the, in the form of like leaving time between work is the solution. I think it's more the fact that in those breaks, you're doing something that's going to inject more inspiration into your mind, that's going to give you emotional stimulation, that's going to pull you into different areas of thought than you have been when you've been working. Exploring different worlds. This is one of the reasons I love exploration games in particular, because I feel like they do this very well. If they're immersive, they help you to completely detach your mind from this space where you've been hyperproductive and just an unmotivated husk. And they transport you somewhere where you can feel inspired and just and bring in all this new imaginative stimulation, you know? So I feel like there's definite emotional and kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Mental stability benefits in doing that. Then there is also the side of it where I feel like investing some time into enjoying these things can also help you be more productive more intelligent, more creative in the long term. And I feel like that's something that people actually maybe neglect. And I believe I've done a video about this as well called a productive procrastination or, or the benefits of procrastination, which is essentially where as you keep transitioning your mind between these different states of being in your productive work environment and being in this kind of creative, mellow environment, you're giving your mind opportunity to link your current ideas to new ones and form new ideas. And that's very good for the creative process. Sometimes it's very important just to detach yourself from those spaces, just to let that happen automatically as well, which is why it's quite often the case that when you go for a shower, like in the evenings or the mornings, whenever you do it, and when you're kind of laying down in bed at night, and maybe even when you're dreaming, you might suddenly be sparked with the inspiration of new random ideas that you didn't have any specific engagement in formulating. Those ideas would not have happened if you were just in the same work environment all day, every day, like all the time, which would really be functional because you'd like you'd be neglecting your body anyway, and you just end up dying of thirst after a couple of days, or maybe more than a couple of days. That's beside the point anyway. I think the enjoyment of these distracting things is very beneficial for the creative process. And I've known some people in the past that have done this thing where they, you know, they install this um, productivity software, these anti-distraction tools, which prevent them from using certain softwares and certain websites and you know, like change like different aspects of your computer just to make you as productive as possible. And I admire their commitment to that. But I think that when you give yourself very harsh boundaries for when you can and can't enjoy things like that, you're again, disallowing this creative potential from entering your space. One of my favorite sayings that we'll put in here is you don't know what you don't know, which means that you have no idea what things you haven't discovered yet, and you can't predict them because you have no idea they exist. In the same way that you have no idea what's happening in someone's life like a few roads away because you don't know who they are, you don't know like what their lifestyle is, 
but they're there. You, there's no like psychic sense to tell what's going on. You don't know what you don't know. The same concept applies for creative ideas and sparks of inspiration. You have no idea what really cool creative ideas you might come up with if you actually just sat down and played a video game for five minutes. You might randomly just get something that goes boop right in your mind, something like a really cool new project idea. If we're talking about Blender, it might be an add-on or some kind of new tool or art piece that's just like suddenly really amazing. And you go, oh my God, yeah, let's just do that. And all of a sudden it might make you thousands of dollars. Now it might sound wacky, but that's pretty much how most of my ideas have come along because I spend a lot of time playing video games. I mean, it really depends what video game you're playing because some of them really make you engage with doing task completion. So like you'll be focusing on the game a lot. Some of them are much more automatic and you're kind of doing them on autopilot. And we could raise the question of, okay, well, what type of engagement with a video game do we think causes more idea links to occur in your mind? And I think on the surface, it's probably the ones which make you engage in autopilot more because then you're kind of entering a more kind of subconscious line of thought. But it depends if you have any other distractions going like music or if you're watching any videos like on the side of playing the game, which might take your thought away. And I do that quite a lot. However, I think that if we're talking about ideas which are made from new sources of inspiration coming in, then I believe video games which are more engaging rather than forcing you to play on autopilot would come more in handy. So for example, if you're playing a video game where you're entering somewhere you've never seen before, it's a story you don't know, you're much more likely to be inspired to try something new because you're seeing something that's giving you like a whole source of new ideas. For example, I just finally watched Dune the other day, the new film from Denis Villeneuve, and it's absolutely fantastic. Love it. Oh my God. Cinematography is fantastic. And I said to some of my friends, Timothy Chalamet was made for those outfits. Then having brand new, really impressive stuff like that coming into your conscious and subconscious is fantastic for giving you new ideas for things to make. I guess we would call that active inspiration. You know exactly what it is, you know it's going in, and you know you're using it to formulate new ideas. Active idea creation is I guess what we would call that, and the autopilot alternative we would call passive idea creation. Just stuff that pops into your head without you necessarily kind of engaging with the full process of it. For things like having ideas while you're dreaming, I guess that's a combination of both. You're active because you're there and taking part in it, and it's passive because it's like a kind of subconscious injection, which is a weird thing to think about. But anyway, let's roll it back a bit. So should you feel ashamed for being unproductive? It depends. Because if you're keeping it balanced, you know that you're doing productive work, even if you're spending most of your time being unproductive. Uh, I'm, just, I'm basically just talking about myself here. I work in very short bursts of like extreme productivity and then I spend a long time playing video games. And I'm basically trying to justify the fact that no, I should not feel ashamed about it because I'm actually getting a lot of stuff done. So from my experience, I would say the same to other people. If you know that your content output, or it doesn't even have to be like a content output, if your learning output, if you're in the process of learning, is good from like like the abstract perspective over the long term, even if despite on the shorter term, you're spending most of your time being unproductive, then I think you should not be ashamed because you have been making process from that perspective, if that makes sense. You can justify it to yourself as well by knowing that even when you are being unproductive, you're still being productive by generating ideas, if that works for you. I mean, it doesn't work for everyone. People get distracted to different degrees. But I know I, for one, am the kind of person that will come up with new ideas while I'm partaking in more inspiring and entertaining kind of activities such as you know watching films talking to people playing games etc so whereas years ago i used to be a bit more ashamed about it and i used to give myself a harder time i've come to understand over time that it's actually just been much more beneficial for me from a creative and an intellectual standpoint i have noticed a few things about my personality right so if i do absolutely nothing at all so no stimulation and no creation. I become, you know, quite anxious and maybe maybe a bit depressed. Uh, depressed is such an overused word, but I become a bit like just low, just feeling a bit kind of useless and dejected. And it feels like my mind kind of like crinkles up because I'm just not making anything. I'm not, I'm not stimulated by anything. So then the next step up from that is if I'm just making stuff all the time, then it gets rid of that sensation, but I'm becoming kind of dejected and maybe a bit detached from reality because stuff is just a bit boring and you're just like an unmotivated husk again just working through productive tasks. And eventually you get through all those tasks and you don't know exactly what to do next because you're not creative anymore because you haven't been inspired. So we come up to the third step, which is if I'm keeping myself productive doing all those tasks and I'm keeping myself inspired by taking part in all of this entertainment, then I am maximally happy, I suppose, because I'm constantly generating new ideas. There's constantly new things I want to try. And I'm also keeping up with a work output. And if those two things I can see are true, 
then I have no worries whatsoever. And I feel like that's going on in my life right now. I feel like I'm quite productive with my output. And there are lots of things I'm enjoying taking part in, lots of films I've been watching. Finally caught up with The Matrix and Dune, as I said. There's lots of TV shows I've been watching. There's video games I'm playing. I went back to Borderlands 3. I'm really enjoying that now. And Dying Light 2 came out, so I'm playing through that. Really good times. I've been having fun on Dead Cells as well. Pushing myself a little bit every time. Factorio has been fun recently. I love automation type games. Destiny 2 expansion is coming out soon, and I think... Risk of Rain 2 DLC the 1st of March. So it's like things that you can get kind of excited about. On one side, you're a tool of creation. On the other side, you're a human being. And we need to make sure that both of these are kept in balance. So no, you should not feel ashamed for being unproductive. You are, after all, a human being. You need to look after your happiness. But I think it's important to keep in mind a longer term sense of balance. Balance does not necessarily mean completely splitting your time down into halves, where you're working for half the time, playing for half or less of the time, because that's not what I do. I am unproductive for the majority of my time, the vast majority. Because even while I'm distracted with all of these other things, I'm still generating ideas, mixing around priorities in my mind of things I want to do. Let's do that video first. Let's do this website change next. Let's do a product thing here. So while I'm doing all these other things, I'm constantly moving this stuff around. And this is also represented by my organizational software I use. I use ClickUp specifically at the moment, but I really like this one because it has a priority list where I can keep moving tasks around. So occasionally, if I'm doing something completely different, I'll randomly flick back over to ClickUp, move tasks around, and then go back to what else I was doing. So I know that when I do finally feel like being productive, I can see that those priorities have changed. So I've still been working even while I haven't been working, if that makes sense. I feel like this video has been very rambly. I've already spoken quite quickly as well, but I got it out of my system. So cheers to that. So yeah, don't feel ashamed for being unproductive, I guess, within reason. All things within reason, that's rule one. So yeah, I think there's not much else I can add to that. Um, have a great day. Stay unproductively productive if you want to, and I'll see you next time.